Hey everyone, good morning, good evening. Today we are here to talk about the best practices of platform product management. Um, thank you, Product School, for this wonderful opportunity. Let's dive in. Uh, quickly about me. Um, I'm Mani Kampanian, uh, Senior Product Manager with PayPal for the last eight years. Uh, have been working on different uh, different platform management products for uh, multiple years now. I started my career with uh, Deisha and Co uh, as a software developer and transitioned into this product management role. Um, I'm very, very passionate about product management and it happened by chance. I, I started loving it. So I strive to look for really emerging trends on the fraud management space, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and uh, you know, I, I, I really look for those trends to uh, have a complete change in the way we interact in the future. Um, quickly about my uh, uh, personal life. So I have been born and brought up in Tamil Nadu. And now, uh, you know, with, with the COVID situation in India, it's, it's really, really hard. Um, so I hope uh, things get better pretty soon. And, uh, you know, in, in this particular situation, there are a lot of different customer problems that has emerged. And I hope newer and newer platforms will be built to solve those problems as well. Um, again, let's, uh, you know, as part of this today's topic, let's move on to understand what is a platform first, right? So uh, platforms, uh, let's, let's call it as industry platforms, to be honest. So, uh, you know, industry platforms are those that are visible to the customers, right? So basically it can be an innovation platform where the, the the company has created a platform for getting people to leverage that, right? So it could be AWS. There are lots and lots of companies using AWS today, right? And then uh, platforms are the real new titans. And in fact, if you look at it, five out of the six most valuable companies are really platform based. And also the new startup unicorns, at least 60% of them are platform based ones. So clearly platform is, is the way forward to, to enable more and more product experiences for customers in a scalable way. Like if you look at the transaction platforms, transaction platforms enable transactions between multiple users. Let's quickly look at how PayPal as a payment network transaction platform uh, handles this uh, network effort, right? So, so basically, as, as you all know, PayPal has both buyer and seller uh, or consumer and merchant uh, in the ecosystem. And as long as the consumers prefer PayPal, merchants would really want to put down PayPal as an option during checkout, right? And, and this continues as a vicious cycle, right? So uh, merchant really wants to put down PayPal as an option. And as soon as uh, more and more people see PayPal as an option in the checkout experience, they would want to be part of the PayPal network. And that's what we call as creating a network effect. And most of these transaction platforms does that. And that really helps in scaling up the platforms as well, right? Um, as a definition of platform, we can see that platforms really is a set of technologies or bundle of uh, you know, technologies that can enable the, the products or the product experiences for the end customers um, to share data and experiences with one another, right? And then, these are these are really the the industry facing platforms, and a lot of companies may specifically focus on a particular purpose. And once it's well built, that industry platform will will look at uh, um, you know uh, capturing that particular space. If you look at uh, Twilio, for example, right? Twilio is a, is a uh, platform company which enables uh, the future of communications, right? You can, as a business, you can actually reach out to more customers using phone or using uh, text pretty seamlessly using the APIs uh, that that Twilio provides, uh, and and it's it's a uh, it's a great platform to be honest, right? So so these are the trends that are emerging, and this is exactly the reason why we need to understand how platform product management needs to be done. And I'm happy to be part of the platform product management group now, and I want to explain you uh, how it works on the internal platforms as well. Like let's, we have seen the industry platforms, let's move on to the internal platforms now. So, so if you look at, uh, you know, the, the broad spectrum of things in a, in a large company or even in a small company, like uh, there is a clear uh, 
you know, engagement of uh, focus on the platform. And the platform is all about scalability and reusability, right? So if you look at uh, this particular, uh, you know, fictional web services uh, kind of structure, you have a customer growth product management whose primary focus is to improve engagement, bring in more revenue or bring in more customers. And uh, they, they have a different product line or segment and their organization goals are around, you know, connecting with the customers and understanding uh, which one would work better. In, in the other side of things, like if you look at the platforms, there are so many different platforms, right? And each of these segments would need the power of these platforms. And that's the beauty of it. Like once you build a particular platform, the platform will have its own experience for the end customers. So platform needs to understand how the customers interact with their platform specifically. And it's also important for the platform product manager to connect with each of these product lines and understand how do we accumulate these set of use cases and build the platform for the future so that you know it can be built in a scalable fashion. And, and based on the organization structure in the company, you know, there may be like a different set of platforms uh, that can be there. And based on the nature of the business, the kind of platforms you will look at will also be different. And, you know, as, as we saw just in the previous slide, about five of the six companies, the large ones are platform based. And we are moving towards platform based companies in the future, absolutely. Right. And, uh, you know, this, this, this is the exact reason why we also need to understand why creating the right platform experience is important for our end customers and what are the different kind of best practices, especially for um, platform product management. Right. Yes. So let's let's move on to the uh, best practices of platform product management from my perspective, from my experience. Uh, happy to learn and share feedback along the way. So uh, please uh, let me know offline if there are other things that you have seen that have worked well, that is not captured here or that could have been better and so on. So the first thing is building a strategy platform vision. So it's all about where you want to go. Like, uh, you know, there's a small story where, you know, there was a person who was walking down the road and there were two pathways in front of them. And, and if, if the, uh, you know, the person was looking for directions, right? And the other person giving directions was asking, like, where do you want to go? And if you don't know where you want to go, then you can very well take either of those paths, right? So, so that's where, uh, you know, uh, understanding the organization goals and also building the vision very clearly is the most important aspect of, of platform product management. So if, if we are looking at a consumer product management, it's like setting up the vision similarly uh, for, for that customer growth or that particular segment based on, on those goals, right? So uh, let's let's look at uh, some of the key aspects, right? So from the platform standpoint, as I said, you know, the, the kind of uh, uh, big picture that you have to see is absolutely necessary because as a platform, you're going to cater to numerous use cases and the number of customers is going to be really, really huge. So the, the number of use cases that you have to deal with is again, extremely high, right? So so that's that's also the beauty of it. You have a big, broad picture that will help you to also uh, accumulate information when people are coming to you and then share feedback when people are coming to you. So uh, again, some of the common practices is like clearly understand what is the purpose of the organization and then define those uh, clear KPIs, right? Um, and obviously, uh, you know, when you're looking at a large statistic vision, strategic vision, it's important to understand uh, and make the short term versus long term trade offs. We will come to that. So uh, it's also important to understand the competitors. Look for competitors with similar platforms. Like if you are looking at an identity platform, for example, is there uh, something similar as as 2.0, which is the framework that's developing? Then then you know it's it's important to build on top of uh, that that particular framework, right? And then make sure you're you're going towards that direction or be the leader in creating that uh, in the in the whole ecosystem. Um, one of the important differences is, is the alignment between business and architecture. It's super critical for platforms to have 
complete alignment from the business need and the operational alignment. There are always certain challenges there, uh, but but it's important to understand that it's uh, it's uh, this alignment that will help in scaling up the platform. Right? Um, and then uh, understanding the customer's customer. That's another important aspect because you you would be involved in so many different meetings with different kind of context. Like people will come in and say, you know, I'm going to go into this market and then develop something. And some may, some may come and say there is this specific particular uh, authorization issue that I'm trying to fix. Or there could be someone coming and saying that, you know, I want to improve the number of net new actives on the platform and I need this platform to support me in, in you know, doing certain things. So all of those things needs to be baked in. And then we have to figure out which one creates the most impact and come up with that uh, right roadmap with a, with a clear long-term view. So a couple of scenarios, right? So abuse management platform. Like if you're looking at abuse management platform, it's one of the things that I'm currently working on. So we are, we are looking at building abuse management as a capability across multitude of use cases on PayPal, right? So there are, there are going to be customers who are looking for promotions and when they are applying for the promotion we are going to look at whether they are really abusers or they are really good customers or potentially good customers right and then enable them to have a seamless experience when they are really good customers and if they are probably abusers tag them and make sure they get the right kind of experience that they are intended to have so if you look at the the applicability of this abuse management platform in itself right so the abuse management platform will have its own goals clearly on how do you define abuse or, you know what are the factors that you need to consider what are the data elements that you need to collect from the customer how do you collect them how do you provide the experience for good customers or bad customers so there's a customer experience element there is this platform element and so on but if you look at uh, the use cases like that would be a customer growth pm looking at net new actives and saying that i'm running this promotion campaign and i need the abuse management platform to support me and similarly, there could be sellers uh, on, on PayPal who are sending out invoices. Like what's the intention of those uh, sellers who are sending out invoices? Are they really abusers or trustworthy? It's important to, to handle that scenario as well, right? So there are, there are also use cases around sending money. Like if a person is sending the money or requesting the money from, from another person, you know, if, if they are friends and they know that it's coming, it's all good, but if, if it's actually an abuse activity, it's important to stop that from happening, right? So, so those are those are different use cases and different kind of customer needs. Some of them uh, would, would come to you as a platform to enable that. And then when you're building the platform, it's important to have that not star vision and set those, set those KPIs very clearly, right? Another, another example could be dispute management as a service. Like dispute management is all about how do you solve uh, the customer's problem after they have interacted with you, like they have seen an issue and they are looking at, uh, can can someone help me in solving this problem? And uh, it could be a chargebacks in the case of transaction, again, from the PayPal context. Um, if it is a marketplace, like people go to marketplace and say, I, I am not happy with the product. Um, and, and it's important to uh, see if we can create a service around it and make it as a platform so that irrespective of whatever is the use case, right? Uh, maybe it's cross uh, geo, it can be local transactions or it can be a marketplace transaction, it can be intangible transaction. You know, how do we provide that seamless experience and build in that whole, you know, dispute management process? And if it is even possible to create it as a service for enabling marketplaces to create disputes on PayPal, we have done that. Right? And then also getting the response from customers because there are different kind of customer segments. It's important to understand the personas and build those uh, uh, view work with them, understand the feedback, all those things still is required. And then building it on the platform for the internal teammates. That would be like uh, teammates who are looking at the dispute and making a decision. It's important to understand what their perspective is as well, right? So overall, it's important to clearly have a long-term vision of where this platform is going to stand and what's the purpose of this platform and align it with the company's goals. And from the platform product management standpoint, the key things that are standing out are alignment between business and architecture. It's super important. We cannot do a lot of hacks and it's not going to be scalable. And understanding the customer's customer. If the customer is coming up with, hey, I'm going to increase this net new active. 
understand who are those customers who are going to come in is, is going to be important. So some of the times you don't have that liberty to connect with customers of customers whole lot, but it's important to empathize and uh, you know also share the learnings that you have got from the broad spectrum. Yeah, so let's let's move on to the second uh, option. So it's its balanced approach on prioritization. This is again one of those best practices that's common, uh, but the way we interpret in the platform product management is going to be slightly different, right? So let's let's get a, a view of what are those and then probably see um, that as well. So clearly, you know, uh, from the platform PM's perspective, there are numerous different types of stakeholders to manage. That's that's one of the key things to understand, right? So there is obviously the users who are going to use the, the experience of the platform product management. The platform itself could be an API, which means there are a lot of internal stakeholders than the external ones, or it could be a tools, which is like, uh, you know, uh, the, the customers or the users of that would be internal uh, operations team as well, right? So it's important to define who are those stakeholders and what's their goals. And there are going to be customer growth PMs coming from different uh, segments and looking for different aspects. So that also is key uh, from, from the uh, stakeholder management standpoint. And obviously developers interacting with your own team to make sure they understand where you are coming from and why you are asking to prioritize this over others is, is super important. I've been in a situation where, you know, uh, getting into the details of, hey, this is super important for the business. They may come back and say, hey, this is, this is a problem which is super important to be solved. Like there is a bug in the platform and we cannot add tech, tech debt, right? And this kind of conversation is healthy as long as we have a clear understanding and common understanding at the end of the discussion. So uh, it's it's uh, it's ultimately, you know, how how do you decide to solve the pain of, of the customers, right? It's, it's all about solving problems. So uh, clearly, you know, some of the uh, customer growth PMs may be looking for something specific in the short term, even though uh, you know that might impact the the platform behavior. Uh, you know that's where it's it's important to uh, discuss about that and uh, understand uh, the the uh, way we can change things and negotiate uh, on on getting it built right at the first time. Because there are going to be situations where if we end up adding something that's going to live on the platform for a while, and if we are not thinking through this completely, then that's going to harm the platform more in the future. Um, one of the other aspect is uh, you know specific to platform product management. It's all about providing this accurate information uh, in a concise fashion so that anybody who is really looking at integrating with this platform will have a complete knowledge of what they are getting into without even talking to the platform PMs or the platform teams. That's the ideal situation. <laughs> Nobody will be there at, at any point in time, I hope. But you know, there could be some, some customization that may be required. Unless there are, uh, you know, if there are no customizations that are required, then the platform documentation and the communication on top of it should be really accurate so that you know, people understand and integrate pretty easily. Right, so uh, it, it's primarily for internal developers. Let's let's uh, look at a couple of examples, right? Uh, you know, always there are situations where we may need to customize something for someone, and it's important for the business. So understanding the business goals, as I said in the previous uh, best practice, is clearly the key. And uh, there are going to be different stakeholders, so we need to make sure the the goal of the business is achieved even though uh, we, we are doing some customizations on the platform the customizations on the platform should be built in a way that can be leveraged for other partners as well and it should also be modified in a way to to pivot uh, on the long-term vision as well because if, if a biggest partner is really looking for this there are also other customers can we build the capability in such a way that it can be extended to other partners as well and other use cases as well in a meaningful fashion? So that really depends on a specific use case, specific problem that we are trying to solve and so on. Uh, one of the examples was like Google was looking for, uh, uh, you know, integrating with PayPal. We have done that recently. There are a few customizations that we did for enabling that to happen in, in, the, in, the, in the way that Google really wanted to happen, right? So, um, and uh, this particular uh, common, problem that we may see in, in common scenario that we may see all, all together is all about like 
but there are always this uh, partner needs or, or uh, you know merchant needs versus uh, you know I, I have this platform vision which is uh, you know long term and I want to make sure I don't want to change anything there. Um, so so one of the examples could be like uh, you know a partner is looking to um, change the way the platform behaves for their specific use case. Um, like you know, how do you make sure money is not given to the end merchant immediately, and it has to be based on my signal or something like that? Like decide how can you build it in the platform, and have a plan, right? So because there are going to be timelines, there is going to be scope, there are going to be only enough resources, so there are always challenges in the way um, we handle things. So so we have to deal it with care um, because the decision that we are making here. We also come back and haunt us if you are not making the right decision. So it's take your time, think through this end to end, work with your architectural team, understand the perspectives of the customer's customer, and also uh, you know make sure you communicate with them often and proactively as much as possible so that people understand why you are making that decision and what your what's your goal ultimately, right? And and that will make sure they have other ways to solve the problem too, or you can guide them through the process. Um, so yeah, the next one is execution, right? So obviously, only when the product is given to the hands of the customer, that's when the the network effort, the the whole uh, ecosystem is going to get the benefit out of what you were always thinking about, right? So it's all about uh, collaborating uh, to ensure you know you have a clear way of uh, handling things uh, along the way. So uh, obviously, if you look at uh, the customer need lifecycle, right? It's it's a, it's a four uh, swimming process. Maybe this this one is um, common, and people might have seen this more often. Um, the first one is uh, you know discovery, like really identify and validate solution approaches, right? So the first one is like understand what's the specific problem that we are trying to solve. It could be uh, a authorization rate for the merchants, for example, right? Like how do you solve that auth rate? For, for merchants. You can come up with different solutions based on the data, based on the research that you're doing, and validate the solution approaches with, with the broader team. So collaborate with as many stakeholders as possible to understand their perspectives, make sure you have a clear view of what are those uh, solution approaches that would work and have that uh, agreement as you get started. And you now there are going to be numerous stakeholders uh, in, in, in big companies and also in small companies, right? So you will have to collaborate with different stakeholders and make sure they have uh, their inputs in the way the product has to be built so that uh, you know you avoid last minute surprises. You don't want to be in a situation where you built all the product and you figure out like legally it's not allowed, right? So, so it's important to talk to the privacy team, understand the inclusion space, understand the legal elements of it and make sure you're building it in the right fashion. Um, so the next part is uh, roadmap planning, right? So uh, if you if you look at uh, the the uh, uh, the platform PM's responsibility, there are always going to be like a support structure for uh, the the uh, customer growth PM's, and that's where it's important to be involved right up front as much as possible, so that you know what's happening, and also you can provide inputs based on your broad knowledge. Um, and it's important to scope the piece of work that you are uh, completely uh, owning, right? So, so you really scope the work on what you really own and define the behavior. And if you are really owning the end-to-end -end experience, like because platform itself is getting modified and you are changing the customer experience and so on, it's important to talk to the dependent teams and make sure they are aligned with your common goal that you are trying to achieve. Um, and then, uh, you know, along the way, there could be like numerous different inputs that can come in. Uh, as, as a product manager, it's important to uh, understand, comprehend the, the the potential use case that can create uh, some of those uh, approaches that we have defined uh, has to be revisited with that additional information, right? So, so those those things are something that uh, we need to really keep in mind. And uh, obviously, you know, uh, we, we can't have the entire team working on one single program, right? So there are going to be like numerous programs and that roadmap prioritization that we were talking about becomes super important there. And when there are any issues that comes up, uh, it's important to have the reliability of the platform uh, as, as those, um, uh, you know, important elements and make sure if there are any issues that comes up, how do we accommodate for those in the roadmap? 
and then uh, the last part is like measuring and monitoring and keep uh, iterating on uh, how do we build the product or, or the platform in the right fashion as we get to know more things uh, and we have uh, newer uh, solutions identified then those are those are the aspects that we need to think through um, so as a platform product manager the reliability and availability is critical so building the product platforms with new capabilities should be of the best quality right so because the platforms are going to cater to almost all of the customers right so if you are not taking care of the quality then then that's going to be even bigger problem because it's not one segment that's going to be impacted it's the entire segment so so that's the scale of things that we are looking at from from the platform perspective as well so it's important to remember that uh, when when you are building anything um and when you are identifying uh you know something uh that's identified to be a pitfall or a corner use case that comes up and then it's important to be on the toes and understand the kind of issues that has happened be quick to respond to it understand what are the implications of it and pivot quickly to to the uh, new findings and uh, make sure you know you are you are also enabling the team uh to execute flawlessly because there there are going to be team members uh, working on different things that are going to be new dependencies that can be identified along the way immediately it's important to make sure you you get that uh, dependency alignment done and uh, receive the commitment to start executing on on the items based on the the company's goals based on the uh, um, organization goals right so so it's important to align on that front as well because each of the teams have their own small capacity and uh, you know each one have lot of different priorities so those those are the elements when uh, you know you are considering on the execution front ultimately remember that rome was not built in a day and it was not built by one person right so it's always uh, product managers need lot of support from numerous teams to deliver on their roadmaps and only once you build the capabilities that you are really looking to build is when you have an opportunity to delight the customer experience and create that network effect or or uh, you know the platform effect um yeah sounds good moving on to the last but not the least uh, best practice it's all about learning continuously so you have to really measure clearly monitor what are the goals that the organization set up what were the goals for your platform that you set it up along with your internal stakeholders and uh, measuring that on a periodic fashion right so let's let's move on uh, to to that so clearly uh, you know for platform pms uh, it's it's mostly the adoption right adoption of the platform is one of the key kpis um it's also uh, important to understand the key business metrics so one of those uh, scenario that i'm mentioning is is the managing fraud or the auth rate that you're talking about earlier so like auth rate is from a merchant standpoint internally the kpis of the platform could be like how good the decision is like how do you measure whether the decision is good or bad like you can understand whether the, the good users have got a decline uh, because of uh, something incorrect how do you reduce that from happening right and what are the losses that that's happening ultimately right like how do you reduce those losses so you have a clear kpis that is well defined uh, from from the organization perspective and those kpis should also take into account the adoption of the internal customers or adoption of uh the end customers uh, like if it is a dispute management api right how many people use that to respond to disputes for example right and then um also if you are looking at uh, you know what are those uh, elements that you need to look at uh, you need to be really looking at uh, measuring those kpis continuously and then monitoring them uh, before the product launch after the product launch and continuously looking at whether the the product capability that you have added is uh, providing that intended uh, results okay uh, it's also important to document the capabilities very clearly so that uh, you know people can integrate with us in a self service fashion uh, there are going to be numerous uh, stakeholders and uh, getting feedback from them is is one of those most important things right so um you you have this experimentation way of understanding how customers are adopting and then you can learn from that talk to customers understand the feedback from them and then have a roadmap identified and so on uh, also internal customers who who are going to look at customizing the strategies or building those uh, additional layers on top of uh, the platform um would would be looking at uh, this platform for different purposes right 
how do you accommodate that feedback and learn continuously in the process is one of those key traits for a platform product manager. Um, and and uh, you know uh, also be really open minded, right? So understand that there are going to be a platform lifecycle or a product lifecycle. Some of the hacks that we have added has to move away. And if if the platform was built in a way that that can accommodate numerous use cases, that's when it can live for a longer time. But some of those capabilities needs to be revisited based on the emerging trends, right? There could be a situation where uh, you know we wanted to have a platform which can give a specific recommendation for the customers, but you know it would be better for for the customers to select their own choice right so so that becomes you know a completely different way to look at from the platform perspective and then change the way the platform has to be built for that uh you know perspectives right so that so that it becomes um the the platform is built for the newer way of thinking right so so at the end of the day platforms needs to be really reusable it has to be scalable we are looking at how do we uh, reuse as much as possible and leverage as much as possible um, there, there would be like numerous, numerous stakeholders and multitude of use cases that we have to deal with. Um, and understanding the feedback from each one of them from different perspective will help you to really grow the platform and make it even more valuable. Like as long as you're adding more capabilities that are relevant for your platform vision, it makes a lot of sense to accommodate those. And it's also important to say no or define the boundary of your platform very clearly. Otherwise, people may end up adding more use cases and it becomes really hard to take it out in the long term. Right. So 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 those are those are the aspects that you need to consider. And um, yeah, so from from the scenarios perspective, right, you are going to have a periodic review with uh, the team. There's going to be a business review or a quarterly business review, monthly business review that you may have with your internal stakeholders, uh, with your partners or end merchants talking about, hey, how has been your loss rates? How has been your fraud trends that has emerged in the recent past. And uh, these are the recommendations or suggestions that you would recommend to have on your platform. And these are the things that we are doing on our platform to accommodate. And that, that helps us to keep uh, ourselves on our toes to understand the emerging trends and handle or build those right capabilities in the, in the platform. Um, so with that, now I want to also share some of the, um, you know, good references. Uh, for for further information, feel free to use these links. I hope this this date will also be shared right after this meeting from the product school team. Uh, and thank you again for the wonderful opportunity. I really enjoyed uh, you know um, building this pro platform products and happy to share my insights. Feel free to reach reach me over through LinkedIn or or any of the other channels that that you have. Um, again, thank you, product school, for the opportunity.